This is the Cassandra Lauren Gordon YouTube channel where we talk about identity, heritage, relationships and jewellery culture. So why am I doing a review? Another review about a relationship reality TV show. Well, as a jeweller, as a goldsmith, I'm always in people's business. I'm joking. I'm always in people's relationships because I make a lot of jewellery for people's relationships like engagement rings and special occasions and anniversaries and wedding rings. So, And I don't really watch much reality TV, but this is the only ones I type of kind of watch. And my partner said to me, just just do it. Just do a YouTube video because you watch it. And I was like, OK. So here I am. And I always thought about if I'm passionate about something or I like something, just do it anyway. You know, forget the fear. So here I am. And when I do it as a jeweler talking about a review of a reality TV program, which I love, which this is my, you know, I, I know people can be quite snobbish, especially my partner and other people can be snobbish about reality TV programs. So I like this one for lots of reasons. It's love and marriage. Huntsville. So there are a set of couples in, is it Alabama, somewhere, Huntsville, maybe in Birmingham, somewhere south, black people, African American, that's the setup. But it's not just like any other reality TV, people looking for the come up and start shouting things and moaning and want to hit each other. They're quite, you know, successful African American business owners in their own rights, own fields, and they're brought together by love and friendship or divorces now. And um, they all got the, you know, I respect their hustle and their business um, acumen. So that's why I originally um, liked the show or was brought into the show um, for that. And then it got overshadowed with someone cheating and having a baby, an outside baby on one of the wives' call. Yeah. If you don't know, I urge you to watch it from the beginning uh, and then wait till you get here. And I think it's very relatable because I think that the couples especially the youngest couple which i think is melody and martel holt the now divorce and um, they are a similar age range a couple of years older than me so i could like oh i want to be like a melody Holt. i want to have like great children we did want a boss marriage but um you know just on her grind looking after her children um not liking a guy taking advantage of her even though she did give him a lot of Time to get his act together, but he didn't. There goes that perfume thing again. I'm not editing it out. Minimal editing, Cassandra. I'm not the editor, I am a jeweler. Okay, so let me give you, because you probably clicked this because you are a love and marriage Huntsville fan. If you're not, <laughs> as again, please um, go watch. Um, so let me just go for the couples, just in case if you don't watch it already. So how many couples are there in this series? I think it's on season three, two, I can't remember. A new season. Seasons to me is a bit different in America because you can have two or three seasons in a year in America, um, TV time. But in England, when a season is like every year, I know they've aired already this year already. So there's, um, beware of the alliterations and a lot of the M's. They love their M's, the consonant of M's. So there's a couple called Marcel and Letitia. Which or Marcel and Tisha, they're short in it. That's one couple. Then there's another couple called Maurice and Kimmy. And there's another couple, well, ex couple, Martel and Melody. And then there was another couple, when divorcing now, called Destiny and the Beric. And then a new couple they're bringing in, Tiffany and her man. I can't remember what her man, her husband is called. Anyhow, so let me, as I said, um, I'm trying to save you watching the whole 10 million episodes. So I think I'm like, is it nearly halfway through this this series? I thought I'd just comment on it um, because it is my favourite one. I was going to wait to the, the last couple of ones, but I thought, no, no, no. I want to talk about it. Anyway, from last episode, you know, sometimes I don't like how they transition from episode to episode. There's not like a definitive end. They just want to, I feel like these are filler episodes where they're just kind of filling, waiting for drama. I don't think there's much drama what they think in these, these episodes anyway. But anyways, let me get into it and read my notes so I'll be consistent. Consistent Cassandra. That's what I'm striving to be. So background from last 
um, week. Marcel and Tisha, or Letitia, they went to counselling, I think. Um, Letitia kind of ambushed Marcel. In this character, in this reality TV show, uh, Marcel is seen as a chauvinist pig who just lets his wife, wife is there just to do cooking and all that kind of stuff, stay at home with the kids and he's out there to work. And he has a construction company, he has um, a restaurant or a bar company and other business ventures. His wife is very educated, she's got two masters, um, her last masters is in real estate and real, real, real thing, I don't know, property management or something like that. And but people take the mick out of her sometimes because she might miss say words, and I identify with Letitia sometimes because sometimes I say the odd word wrong and people can come down you and be really mean, um for no reason. So you know, keep doing what you're doing. If you say one word, little, one little word wrong, just keep on moving. People just hate us. People hate us, man. Anywho, so it kind of flashbacks like t um Tisha went to Dr. Francis' office, which is the counsellor or therapist, to talk about their marriage, uh, Marcel's and Tisha's marriage. They do that. Marcel doesn't like it. He kind of smooth talks his way out of counselling and he doesn't want to go there again, kind of. So that's like the background. And then there's there's two BFFs, best friends forever, apparently. Um, Melody, which is one of the main characters in this TV programme, and um, Destiny and Melody. So Destiny had a baby, the baby's under a year old. Um, she got married recently, about, I think, less than a year or less than two years to Leberic, and um, they have quietly divorced. And Melody has a big, everyone knows about their marriage or non-marriage now to Martel, where um, Melody and Martel have four kids together. He had an outside baby um, recently. And I think that was the main reason for the divorce and so on. Anyway, there's some tensions between Destiny and Melody. You know, in reality TV shows, how to bring a new character in, especially in African-American uh, reality TV shows, they also have to bring drama. So to bring this character called Tiffany, which is like antagonistic, bring her saying messy things, just inappropriate things at inappropriate times. And she knows what she's doing, but she pretends that she doesn't know what she's doing. I'm just saying it, but... When you say things, there's, you know, there's consequences to what you say. Anyhow, so that's the background. There's a bit of like, oh, why did Melanie bring this new character, or new this person in called Tiffany? And Tiffany is bringing some tea, saying things inappropriate like, oh, I thought you, your husband was kind of with another woman. Or there's this um, child talking about children. To me on reality TV shows, I think children are off, off limits. But that's another story. That's another story. So Melody, so Melody brings this new chick, Tiffany, from the Chamber of Commerce to be to go to a birthday dinner. This happened like a couple of episodes ago, but I'm just trying to give you context because it's going to make sense because I've learned that I've got to give context or I don't make sense. And Tiffany was being in tea and saying inappropriate things at inappropriate times and made people feel away. Anyway, so all of that, you know, high school type of drama in the background passive aggressiveness is happening in the background anyway let's go to this episode so there's this taco tuesday or mexican lunch this fabricated random lunch which production has put on but we're just gonna pretend like Melanie does this anyway in her house on any given sunday or tuesday so mel and destiny uh, was there leticia was there tiffany was there kimmy was there and they have these like kind of playing cards um saying you know you know like i don't know like if you ever it's like a drinking game kind of thing and you pick out like have you ever kissed this person or this they was asking things like have you ever been part of a threesome or have you ever um did oh no how many times have you done os i can't be asked to edit it out so that's why i've done that to be with your partner um, have you ever been the other woman or the side chick or those kind of things you know stirring up the pot being shady and people gave different answers anyway though you can see there was tension between Mel and Destiny going back and forth throwing shade with each other I can't bother to go through the shade but there was one bit where Tisha which is the sister-in-law kind of of Kimmy of the Scots because um, her husband Tisha's husband and Kimmy's husband are brothers 
So they're like Fremini sisters, like whatever. I said, Kimmy, have you ever been a, sh uh, a sidekick? Um, side, well, side, well, he, she is the sidekick to Maurice. But have you ever been a side chick? And she said, no. And I thought that was shade because there's this rumor when Maurice and Kimmy got together, he was kind of still with his ex-wife or something, so or something. It's not my business, but I like Kimmy. Kimmy's probably my favorite because she makes sense and she's very reasonable. Anyhow, they go another scene with Tisha and Marcel. They're driving up this dusty, dusty like hill. She's struggling in a mommy mobile or like a SUV. And um, she's like, what's happening? It's like, oh, where is Scott Manor? So Scott Manor is supposed to be this big mansion or place where all family comes together and create a legacy and wealth or whatever. And it's this new house supposed to get built, but it's not happening. Marcel holds this construction company. And I think he had his um, uncle, I can't remember his uncle's name, but his uncle is like an architect and can hire, does a project management for the general con contracting. Basically things are not moving and they're just moaning about it and bitching about their uncle. But that's what happens when you sometimes you have family or contractors, things take time. There's so much variables, who knows? I don't think it's good to like air out that the uncle's not doing a job. In the last episode, the uncle's like, yeah, but you made last minute changes. So therefore there's more dependencies. So I could understand as a project manager, like if you keep on changing your mind on certain things, we got it, you know, it creates more dependencies and the time length and all this kind of stuff. Anyhow, that's a bit boring. But anyway, the morning bitching about how Scott Manor is not done. And then Letitia's trying to convince Marcel to go into therapy with them, do therapy. And Marcel's like, he doesn't want to do it. It's not for him, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, why do people wait till their relationship crumbles or when the guy does something or the partners or something? Like, oh, I want to go counsel, let's work it out. If your marriage is okay, which I don't think it's not, I don't think every marriage is okay, everything needs a bit of a top up or there's always room for improvement, why don't you try to future proof it? Like when people go to the gym, you know, you get your muscles or you lose weight, you do your cardio to keep that maintenance, why can't you maintain your marriage? This person in your life, you know, impacts on your mental health, your physical being, your children, everything. Why don't you want to make the best out of your marriage? I don't know, like the stigma of the black community of like therapy is not good, marriage counseling is not good and stuff like that. Why don't you always want to be better yourself in personal development? Why don't you just do it for your wife? I don't understand that. So I, I just felt like that was just really annoying. Like you don't want to future proof and just be very dismissive about therapy. And it's not for everybody, but if it helps your woman's or your partner's growth, why don't you just do it for her and stop being a selfish bee? So that's me. Next scene, the next dr infused drama, fake drama, whatever, is a disagreement between two BFFs. So there's Melody and there's Destiny. Melody brings a watermelon. I know I'm starting to bring watermelon to someone's house, but you know, I like watermelon, but I'm just thinking TV, African Americans, racist stereotypes, watermelon, but you know, you do you. Anyway, she brings a big old watermelon to Destiny's house to have a bit of a back and forth about, oh, you never, you know, why did this happen? I don't want to talk about black women always going back and forth. But anyway, they resolved their agreement about Tiffany, about Tiffany being shady and mainly telling Destiny to be quiet at the Taco Tuesday or Fabrication Mexican dinner or whatever. Anyway, and they resolved the agreement or disagreement by... If we open the watermelon, I can't do American accent, but if we open the watermelon and if it's sweet, we can still be best friends. And if it's not sweet, we're not best friends. And I thought, okay, wasted five minutes of my life. I can't get back, but it's okay. You got to fill these episodes in man, when there's not drama. Rather that when you scratch each other's eyes out and have fake fights, rather that. Anyway, next seat, there is this rite of passage kind of scene where the Scott, uh, where the Scott boys, so there's three like cousins or brothers, what they say, they all have similar age range, about thirteen or twelve. I'm not American. I don't know how old you have to be to get from middle school to high school. Is it thirteen, fourteen? I don't know. But they see it as a rite of passage kind of thing. There's graduation, like oh, you're moving into high school. You're being men from boys to men. End of the road. Mm -hmm. That made me think about that, but it's not. 
um yeah and i feel like it was very good to recognize when pe you know these kind of milestones in boys or in adolescence because sometimes i feel with black children or people in the black communities like as soon as they turn puberty they're just seen as men and you know you see how black people have been tried and viewed as men and not as let them be children let them make their mistakes let them learn and having positive male black role models is really cool to see and you know how they're trying to instill in them greatness and trying to get them on the right path and it's very positive and i think those are the aspects apart from a little bitchy fighting those are positive things to see i wish to do similar thing for the young girls when they reach a certain age as well um in in their families not just the men because black women matter too just in case not just crying not just to be a jezebel or take people man and be angry black women they matter too all year round every day Hey, 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 hey. That happens nice graduation. They're going to limo. He, he, he. Everyone's kiki ki, and they go to this place where they're having this graduation kind of high school, middle school to high school dinner. I didn't see the children there, but I did see the adults. And um, Maurice was pulling up, um, rightly so, to Tiffany, put, took her aside, and her husband saying, Look, you know, you can't be chatting about my son. A negative thing about everybody because you're creating stigma you know it's in the public next time do a sidebar conversation right there, there. she started with a crocodile tears and crying like she didn't mean to put any embarrassment or shame on a boy and i'm just like yeah whatever why don't you talk about your son but she doesn't yeah yeah, yeah. that's moved over and then you know you can see melody and martel having you know years and years of like love and each you know you can see the love is still there but melody i feel like she can't go back <laughs> she can't go back to her cheating husband um because everyone will just go against her will go against her brand but i feel like she wants to but the money where the money resides if she goes back to her husband i don't think a lot of people will support her but i don't know it's not my marriage she has she has four kids and um, the guy's a good father not a good husband so i don't know it's hard when you see your an ex who you you love and things just not and you know it hasn't ended great you know but anyway she was defending him saying hey martel don't let people be like you're the butt of people's jokes and people are like oh my god Mel and martel so love each other blah 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 and then there's miss wanda which is letitia's mom so letitia's mom letitia's mom sorry uh is a busybody but she's funny she just you know this character i just feel like it's pantomime you know what pantomime is if american people out there it's like this type of kind of theatrical experience where you have these characters who just spark trouble um a bit, a bit of a busy buzzy um you know that the characters come you get excited you know that she's messy you can't take it too seriously but today when i watched this episode i'm just like oh i miss wonder this is not the hill to die on for these people let these people live you cannot force two adults to be together and you cannot just negate or forget what this guy has done to uh his ex-wife and it's about when women have children, it's like, are they damaged goods? Because Miss Wanda was saying to Emily, like, no one's going to care for your four children. you got four children. You know, it's hard to get a man. Just go with your ex. I'm just like, oh, Miss Wanda, it's not the time. I like you, but not now. Pick your battles to be messy. This was not the time. So let's see being a busybody. Sometimes it's good, but... I usually defend you, but not today, Miss Wanda. Hope you learn from this, lessons learned. So anyway, this is my review of um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think it was a filler episode. They're doing lots of filler episodes. I know it's very popular um, TV show, but at the same time, stop with it. I already have quality and quantity. Carlos King, sort it, fix it. Don't add messy people. Let the story progress. Let it be natural. Let it be real. Okay. Just don't. Yeah. Just make it. Just leave it. Be organic. Don't put too many elements in. Okay. Carlos. Thank you. Don't be a messy, messy person. Okay. So 
as I said, I talk about identity, heritage, relationships, talk about relationships, um, please in the comments, let me know how I did in this review. Um, definitely going to follow it to the end of the season. I did another review about put a ring on it. I hope you watch that. I'm looking forward to talking to you next week. So before I go, if you like supporting black creatives or black businesses, I have one of my signature jewelry pieces, which I've won an, an award for in the jewelry Oscars, the gold award for. Um, it talks about having a light bulb moment, how you're going to change, how you're going to have action in your life, how you're going to be your best self, no matter what happens, no matter what heritage or whatever people say. Um, this is the light bulb moment. It's a conceptual jewelry piece, and also it has braids and cornrows around it. You know, I love the braids. Every culture has braids, no matter if you're black or white, European or whatever, Aborigine. Everyone has, you know, weaving braids together. When you have one hair strand, you can just pick it off, and it's not strong. But when you put lots of hair strands together, you weave it, you're weaving that energy winning really unity. So let's unite together, and for the KLG Nation to know that you're not alone. People might think you're a bit weird. People might don't understand where you're going, but you're not alone. The KG Nation, we, we got we got you, yeah? So support, black businesses, put your money where your mouth is. Help, listen, support what I do. Doesn't cost much to like, give a good positive comment. Do that below. And looking forward to speak to you another time, another place. Speak soon.